Hi guys, welcome back to DAT. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the ProTech 25 from iFlight. We're gonna be doing a complete setup, flights and reviews. So stay right there. So here she is guys, we got the ProTech 25. That's right, cinematic ProTech 25 drone. This one, I have to say I have purchased with my own money and we're going to be doing this review and I'm going to be actually using this for work. I'm doing more and more work these days, doing some cinematic flying for businesses locally and I need an upgrade really and we're coming to that bridge a bit later on in this video. So I've gone for the ProTech 25 basically because of the size of it. I didn't want anything too big. I wanted to try and keep the weight as low as possible, keep the craft as small as possible so I can get into a lot tighter spaces. Everybody likes a tighter space, don't they? So this should fit perfectly for that purpose. And I am going to compare it, I will be comparing it to the actual uh, Beta FPV 95X, and this is the V3 one. So we'll be doing that later on in the video because obviously I need to get some flights in with this as well. This one though, what I have brought is, this is the HD version. So it's got the um, Calyx Vista in it. I'm not sure, I'm actually not 100% what the camera is in it. I'm hoping it's not the Nano, but it may be. I've got a sneaky suspicion it may be the Nano. We will find out. But this actually comes without a um, receiver in it. So we're gonna have to stick a receiver in it. And I'm obviously gonna stick in Crossfire. As always, if you've been watching my videos, I do love Crossfire, so that would be going in it. But let's get straight into this box and let's see what's in here. And we have loads of things in here, to be honest with you. Way, way loads of things. So first things off, spare set of props, always nice. Bag of gooders, spare bolts, and a strap and some sticky pants for your battery, so that's good. I've just seen that. Ah, nice little nice little key ring there. So that'll be that'll be nice, won't it? Nice key ring. Power cables, you don't often get power cables in your quads, do you? I've never seen a power cable come with my quad, to be honest with you. So that's a really nice thing to do. Power cable there. Uh, you've got a different um, GoPro mount, or it's the GoPro adapter mount, you know, the sort of things. You've got that, they've actually got one on the quad already, and I think that's for, a, for I don't know what that's for actually. It is a smaller than the normal GoPro ones. So I'll be swapping that out, because I've got loads of these adapters that I use. Uh, so spare cables, not exactly sure what all of those are for, spare cables. And here you have the foam that goes around the side, which I probably will be sticking on. I know some people actually leave this off because they think the actual quad looks better without it, but I'm going to stick it on because I'm telling you now, you fly these things, you are going to bump into something, definitely, if you're trying to get through those gaps. So that's going to go on and it's just going to help with protection. And here she is, here's the actual quad herself. Oh, and in the bottom. There's obviously some user guides. There's something about your props. It tells you which way the props should go. And there's a set of stickers. Different to what I've actually seen in the other reviews. So we'll find a place for those. But that's it. I don't believe there's anything else in there. No, that is the whole box done. So let's have a look at this ProTech 25. Let's leave the box there to help on the background actually. So there she is. She looks absolutely great. Really like the actual design of that. Looks really nice. If you want to compare the size to the actual um, 95X, it's slightly, slight, only slightly. Bumpers make it slightly larger, but only slightly. So you've got the antenna, just plug in the antenna there. You've got some warnings on here about your battery, more warnings here. Not sure what this warning is about. Warning, warning, warning. Be careful when changing parameters. Always be careful when changing parameters. So it's really nice to actually stick these warnings on. Because if you don't, you're not actually unsure, if you're unsure, not too sure what you're doing, then it's nice to have these on there. But they can all come straight off. No need for them. They've already got a strap on it, so it is a spare strap that they came in the actual packet. More warnings there. Batteries, battery warning. What does that warning say? For best performance, place the battery in the center of gravity. So a good little warning, right? So we're gonna take this top plate off. We're gonna have a look inside, because I'm not gonna stick this in yet. And we are gonna have to 
wire in crossfire. So we're going to stick crossfire into it. I've got an antenna as well, obviously. Here's the antenna. The antenna's going to go on the back. It has got a place it can go nice and easily. See the mount? Really nice mount on the back. So it'll just go through there, no problem. Lovely. She's really nice. Yeah, really like that. Very keen to actually fly her. There you go. So, I'm going to get the top off. We're going to have a look at actually installing the actual crossfire. And I'm also going to be looking at obviously using the SMO camera on here. So we're going to actually put one of those um, power cables into it as well. So stay there, I'll be right back guys. So all I'm going to do is we're going to get inside now. So I'm just going to undo the bolts. And we're going to have a look at what's there. Obviously we're going to change this front mount as well. There we go, take the top off, have our first look inside. There's the Vista unit. There she is in there, there's a capacitor, nice mount, very simplistic. All we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how we can actually get, um, let's show that camera there, how we can get the M crossfire in. So the crossfire's obviously gonna have to wire onto the stack, it's not even a stack is it, it's just a board, so we're gonna have to take the um, Cadex Vista off. So we're gonna do a little bit of work to get this in, but it's obviously gonna be worth it. There's a built-in buzzer there, I believe, I believe that's what that is. Yeah, built-in buzzers, that's really nice, that should be nice and loud if it gets lost. Nice little capacitor. So we're gonna start taking some of these other bits off because we're gonna have to take it apart quite a bit to actually do a little bit of soldering now. So let's do that, let's get right in there. The LEDs you should just pull off. There we go. Okay. Antenna stopping that. Hmm. So I'm going to do as less work as possible, but this um, power cable is actually in the way. So I'm going to keep as much attached as possible. So there's what she really is without the ducts. Obviously the camera's over here. I'm going to have remove the Cadex and we're going to get this crossbar unit in place. So I figured out what this pack of, well, they supply this pack of um, extra cables and stuff and they've actually got plugs on, so that's quite nice of them. But in there actually comes one which it will actually work on your um, TBS Nano. So that's really good, isn't it? Crossbar Nano. So that plugs into your actual board and that will just so it's plug and play wire it into your tbs crossfire plug and play into your board all good so we're going to do that right now and we've got live and we've got ground you have to swap those over on the tbs nano i've got it here let me show you here so it goes ground live and then channel one and two at the top and it's straight out so this plug Basically nice and easy. The white one will go to the top, the yellow one goes to the second one down, and then you've got live is the third one down, and then the very bottom one is ground. So that's it, I'm gonna wire this in right now.
There we go. That's all in. Let's let that focus. There we go. That's all in, guys. So there you go. That's the plug that actually comes supplied. That's the Crossfire Nano. These two switch over channel one and channel two at the top. And this just plugs straight in. Strip that plug straight into the actual um, all in one board that's on the actual Protec 25. And now let's twist those. Always twist your cables, helps a little bit. And we will attach the antenna, put some um, shrink wrap over it, and we're good to go. So that slots in just here. There we go. Slots in just there. Plug and play. That's the crossfire in place. Make sure we've got that in nice and tight. No more puns intended, guys. Twist those cables. We've got the antenna. The antenna's here. So we're going to look at putting this all back in place. So we'll do that up as soon as I know everything's okay. So we've got some shrink wrap. Shrink wrap's gonna go on there. Make sure they can get this in place. So there's a hole here for the antenna. Antenna go through there. And we will squeeze. Antenna in there, so that sits absolutely beautiful, just like so. Job done. There's the back. Touch the antenna. Should go on nice and easy. So that's on, just get our shrink wrap in place and we get everything tightened back up. Be very careful if you're using a lighter to do this. There we go. <clears throat> Crossfire all in place, he'll be fine down there. Fits very nicely, antenna on the back. We'll put that back in place now. We won't actually, we'll tighten it up first because we haven't finished tightening it up, have we? 
we get the top plate back in place. We will actually change, while we're here, we're gonna change this mount out, out for the larger one. So here's the larger one. That will fit a mount that I bought because I've got, I'm going to be putting, putting the SMO on here. I've got this mount here, which I've purchased separately. You can see that. That actually came in this kit here. So if you're after a mount like this, look for this kit. And this is actually, it's a naked HD device, Protect Suite. And this is actually for diatone. So part number is JH60230. I'll actually stick a link down where you can actually buy this from, but very useful. Any couple of quid. So before I move any further, guys, I've actually forgotten to stick in my SMO power cable, so I'm gonna tear this apart as quick as I can. It's basically just a, a, a live and a neutral connection. That's all you gotta do. You've gotta stick it straight on the battery connection, so I'm gonna take it quite apart, and I'm gonna do that really quickly right now. So there we are, all in place. I'm gonna quickly get this all back together. There we go, that's almost back together now. Got the actual SMO power cable in place. It is actually, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot more fiddly than it looks. Wasn't too bad, I guess. Right, so let's look at getting the top on. Perfect. There we go. So we just put in the TVS Crossfire Nano and actually connected up the power cable for the SMO camera I'm gonna use. Got the mount in place, got the antenna on. Stick the antenna in place there. That's all ready to go. So like I said, I bought a mount, if I can find it, there it is. Um, it's got a bolt and everything. So this will fit in here perfectly. Comes with the bolt. That is the mounting place as well. So if you can see that on there, get my head out of the way for you. So I'll link the kit down below, like I said, to get that mount. But that'll fit the SMO camera. I've got my SMO camera up here. That fits the camera in absolutely great. So let's stick that in. There we go, it's got the SMO camera on it. Get my face out of the way again. So that's how I'll be flying her. I'm gonna plug the battery in now, make sure she actually works. Find a battery, and let's connect it up. So lights on the back, lights inside, crossfires on. I'm going to see... Welcome to Tango 2. Because I've already banned it with the controller. I have... Got it all set up. Yeah, we have connected to Beta Flight, make sure everything's in the correct place for arming. But yeah, but that's good to go. 
So that's next stage. Next stage, we're going to look at actually connecting up or making sure our switch is in the right place. Go for the configurations before we actually go out and do some flights. So one thing we actually do have to do, guys, is we have to actually plug in the actual uh, Cadex Air unit and we have to register it with DJI. So we have to use the DJI Assistant app, the FPV Assistant app, that is. And you also need a power supply. So whack in the power. Let it do its thing. I've got DJI Assistant open. Plug in the USB cable, which is already connected there. And it should come up here. There we go. Start my activation. Stick my account in. And start activation. Confirm my account. Yeah, I've read. Next. Confirm. It's a lot of confirming. Activation successful. Probably need an update. Cancel that. it's going to sit here, it's going to update automatically, so we'll let it do its thing. So there we go guys, that is just completely updated, so that's um, activated and updated. There's one more thing we actually have to do, I'm going to unplug this though, let it cool down, because the actual unit gets pretty hot. So unplug all of this, which is easier said than done. unplugged. Now what we have to do is actually we have to bind up the Vista unit with your goggles. So power on the goggles. Goggles going. Now there's a small button on the Vista unit and it's in here through this hole. They actually label it. It says activation button or something, they've actually put it, they put link button, but it's through that whole tiny little black button. And you need power in the unit. It is easy with the top off actually, you can see the little black button. Just here, little black button. I'm going to get these twerping. A small button here. That's pressed and that's red. Press the button on here. Hear them beeping. That's it. They are bound. Look through there. Yep, yeah, we've got a beautiful picture. So that is all linked up. So I'm going to disconnect these now. Disconnect the goggles. And then, and now, now all that's done, we're going to look at the actual settings in beautiful other. There's not a lot we're going to have to do. We're going to have to change a couple of settings just to connect up the actual um, Tango 2, make sure it's on the right receiver mode and stuff like that. Have a look at the settings, maybe take something out of the AOSD, but that will be about it. So we're going to connect this up to beta flight and make sure everything's in the correct place. You always have to do this with every quad, guys. Connect it up to beta flight before your first flight because you need to know that your sticks are in the correct place. All your switches work, how you like to fly. It's a bit annoying and that's on the bottom, isn't it? But no well. Make sure everything's in the correct place. Actually, you won't be able to fly, guys. And that's what it's about, flying, isn't it? So that's connected up there. Straight into beta flight, we're obviously upside down. The first thing I know we've got to do, we've got to go over to the receiver. And basically guys, what I'm gonna do on this, let me turn it on. Welcome to Tango 2. There we go. All I'm gonna do is I've duplicated a model and I'm gonna call it, you know, 25, whatever you wanna call it, because I've already bound this up. 
Um, I've got all my settings, got all my switches set up from the last model I did. I've got a full guide to the Crossfire Tango. I'll link that at the top. Please do check it out if you're struggling. It is all there. So that's ready to go. And we need to go into the configuration tab here. Scroll down. And instead of SBUS, we need Crossfire, which is CRSF. Press save and reboot. Connect over to the receiver and instantly you can see there throttle is throttle, your is your, roll is roll, pitch is pitch, everything is absolutely fine. So that is great. That all works. Now over to modes, see what's in here. There's arm. So this is where basically you just set up your switches. And for me, arm is always on the top top switch. That is okay. But for me, I have this the other way around. Press save. That's on, that's off. Angle mode, I'm going to get rid of it because I don't fly angle mode. Uh, what we are going to have is a buzzer. Add range. That's the buzzer, it's always the button on the back. Slider over there. We'll try the flip over after crash, you never know. Might come in useful. Add range. That's always on here. My full guide to the Tango 2 completely shows you how to set up switches and do this modes tab as well. So don't worry if you're unsure and I'm going too fast, check out that video. Let's save. Press this here, hides all the others. That is basically how I fly, I just fly with those three. Got buzzer on the back, I'm gonna have to press another couple of things in configuration. Go to configuration. 180 for the army, that's fine. It has to be 180, else you're upside down and you try to do flip over after crash and it won't actually arm because you're upside down. Mm, we're not actually doing a buzzer, are we? Just forgot, I've actually set this up with a buzzer for a motor, but we've actually got a specific, there's a specific buzzer in there. So we're gonna set that up now. That might actually be set up. So let's actually put some power in it. Let's put some power in it and see if that actually works. Because the buzzer will need some power. Works fine, beautiful. Set the power back out. So that's all set up, and I'm going to go to OSD. Well, actually, first of all, receiver. I've got my RSI set up again, and that is on AUX4. So AUX4 is RSI. Save that there. Go to configuration. Make sure telemetry is on, which I'm sure it is. Telemetry is on there. So over to the OSD. Make sure RSI value is on. That goes there. Disarm and arm. Flight mode, I don't need. Disarm and arm, I don't need. Craft name, doesn't really matter to me. Battery current draw, doesn't matter. Battery current draw. I stick with the three things. Battery voltage, RSI and my warnings. And that's it. So save those. And we should be pretty much ready for a first flight. So I'm going to check that this actually just arms quickly. Disconnect. Unplug. Plug the battery in. Green lights up. Green lights everywhere. 
sounds perfectly. So, without further ado guys, let's go for some flights. Hope you enjoyed that flight guys. I have to say, I don't think I've actually got a bad thing to say about the iFlight Pro Protec 25, if I can get the words out. It's a brilliant, brilliant quad, especially for cinematic flying. It is, it is brilliant. I can't stress how brilliant it is. Like I said, I've been flying the um, Beta FPV 95X, and if I compare the two side by side, this is so unstable compared to this. Um, how I've been flying this, I really don't know, to be honest with you, but this is so superior in every single way. It is unbelievable. 
it's obviously you do get a bit of prop wash and stuff like that if you try to do some high acrobatic moves there are is some prop wash because obviously the size of it and the ducks prop wash a little bit of prop wash to be expected but i have to stress it is little it's completely manageable you can fly through it and carry on do your stuff definitely no problems at all but for cinematic work actually finding your hover point and as soon as you find your hover point the stability that it actually flies at is unbelievable and this i hope you can tell by the actual flight footage to be honest with you the gaps i was doing the tires the doorways the windows all of that was a hell of a lot easier on this than say the 95x again on the 95x this would have been blowing around all over the place and it would have been really really tricky to do but this it just gave me so much confidence and yeah it's brilliant guys absolutely brilliant i fly if you're listening i would love to review a lot more of your quads and stuff i fly please send me some stuff please 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 because this i absolutely love if you want to take let me have a look at the um the 30 version then yeah send that over please let's do something let's sort something out yeah brilliant guys there you go that's it i can't rate it enough it's absolutely superb love it it's going to be in my bag it's going to be out with me regularly when i find those sort of nice sort of cinematic tight gaps and stuff like that absolutely 100 percent that fpv recommendation guys brilliant that's it Smash that thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.